does a lot of the work. Mm -hmm. She almost lets the fabric speak. So yes. sometimes she starts with an idea, but the fabric wants to say something else. So she's ready to go there. You have to be very open and very brave. That yeah. You follow what the fabric wants to do. Yes. Right. Well, that's knowing cloth and knowing what it wants to become, really. And it really is easy if you let the fabric speak and you're true to it. Right. Thank you very much for being here at the Swiss residence, uh, which is a special day for us today. Uh, and I just wondered what brought you to the Swiss residence? Well, for us, it's, a, it's very personal because it's a yes. celebration of our, of our material, our fabric that Isabel really believes in. And Swiss it's, design. Swiss design in general. It's something that's always inspiring because of its innovation and its love of, of modernism and, and futurism. You know, we love that. Um, and on top of that, it is a celebration of the culture, right? Of, of this collaboration of different artists and different... I saw this beautiful lace that you use mm. in, your, in your dresses. Where is it from? Well, it's Swiss fabrics, and this is a relationship I've had for a very long time, especially with Foster Rohner, who I've been working with for many, many years. And in fact, Michelle Obama's dress came from Foster Rohner, and that was a definite inspiration right from the cloth. When I got the swatch, I knew exactly what it was going to be. I knew that that was the dress that was going to dress that day. But did that you fabric. know that it was for Michelle Obama at that time? Yes, I was choosing it for her, yes. I wanted to propose this specific garment. Yes. It's funny because Isabel loves Swiss lace for the reason that it's not necessarily fragile. It's quite right. hardy and it's quite almost like a tweed. There's something about it that's quite uh, wearable, very user friendly. It's, it's user not friendly. super precious that you can't touch it. It's, it actually gets better with age. The, yes. more, the more you wear it, it gets, it gets more character. How does it, what is the process? There's never one particular process. I think it, pretty much everything inspires the beginning of, of, of expressing a thought. For me, it's either a silhouette that I want to capture or a body language that I want to dress, a certain way a woman dresses or stands. That inspires maybe how I start draping a cloth. So in the beginning, there are many different ways that I work. Either I want to go for silhouette or many times I go straight to a fabric. And the, the fabric tells me, dictates what this garment is going to be because I'm very connected to the weave, to the weight of the fabric. That's the easiest inspiration, actually. When, once you have the fabric, it's easy to envision for it. But sometimes I try not to see it and have, it's almost like saying a graphic vision first of a woman without dressing it yet. Then comes the fabric. So I have different ways of working, really. And then, of course, I'm constantly inspired by Ruben because I watch him work. I mean, that's a constant dialogue that I have with his work. And again, I mimic his lines. So it's, I feel very rich in all the inspiration that I can tap into. Being an American, how were you introduced to Foster Rona? Foster Rona is a very famous brand. I mean, sure, it has such a history. So we knew about it from, we knew Dior used it and Balenciaga yes. and all the greats. And uh, so, so it's, a, it's one of those legendary couture fabrics from the past. I think the, the ingenuity was how Isabel was able to innovate how to work with it, how to sew it and make it a new thing, something, something completely different from the past. 